Hi everyone, Angus Campbell here. Wednesday the uh, 4th of August and uh, back on the A70 Lightning and uh, today we'll be focusing on uh, beginning to prepare the uh, crankcase halves uh, following us installing the uh, the rods on the crankshaft in the last episode. So I'll get set up here and I'll bring you back. Okay, before we inspect the uh, crankcases further, one quick thing to mention about the uh, the crankshaft and uh, the left hand rod which is uh, this rod and what I forgot to mention when installing these is that um, these rods are not exactly identical as a pair uh, as a pair one of them has um, small always draw drill sorry always drilled into the lower web and this has to be installed on the left hand side quite what the purpose of that is um, I don't know whether it's to actually to try and feed more oil to the left hand journal uh, because that's the uh, furthest away from the uh, feed or whether it's to let uh, any excess pressure escape uh, I'm not sure I would imagine the former uh, but if we just look briefly at the left hand rod there you can see down in the uh, web is a small hole that's been drilled in and similarly there's there is one on the other side there it is and so that rod is different from the other one which doesn't have them so uh, it has to be installed on the left hand side so that's quick that's that first point to mention the second one is um, somebody was kind enough to um, start almost a thread with some comments regarding um, thrust washers and thrust bearings in that um, he'd read that the uh, the A70 was um, a different uh, design with respect to uh, a thrust washer on the timing side to prevent um, too much force on the flange of the uh, roller bearing on the left hand side and I didn't take much notice of this uh, when I uh, stripped the motor uh, and, uh, because uh, as I've said in previous videos, I used to have an A65 years and years ago, but I never stripped the bottom end of that motor. So I've got nothing to compare that with. Um, but if we just move to the, the crank to one side a second, and um, we'll have a look at the, um, initially the uh, the parts book uh, addendum, uh, and I'll try and um, uh, describe uh, the outcome of, uh, of our deliberations, because... Uh, um, the comments were were absolutely correct, and I hadn't appreciated this when I stripped the motor. So uh, just give me a sec. I'll bring out, dig out some documentation, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so um, there is a uh, part supplement for the uh, the A70. There was this um, separate leaflet, simple leaflet, that was produced um, in 1971, and um, it just simply uh, comprises. Uh, one plate and a list of part numbers to identify just the those components that are different from the the A65. Um, everything else is exactly the same. Um, they also did include this in the 1972 uh, parts book as well, um, and they incorporated it into the book itself uh, just by adding a couple of printed pages and, and not as a separate separate supplement. Um, and in looking at um, both this supplement and the 1972 parts book, then uh, the, this is exactly the same. There were no changes intended, uh, but obviously, ultimately, they didn't produce the uh, the A70 in 1972 anyway, following the cutbacks. So if you just look at this diagram, what well, the follower was referring to in, in his comment is that there's a thrust washer on the outside of the crank here and a shim on the uh, or shims on the inner side of it to correct any end float and that's different to the A65 now um, originally when uh, the, the uh, gentleman mentioned this I was getting a little bit confused because also what isn't shown on here is on the inner side uh, there is also a thrust bearing and that's not shown 
and I'll show you that on the crankcase half now. So here is the uh, the right hand um, crankcase half. This is where the uh, the crank timing side plane bush is. So the first things first is turning this over on the inside. You can see there's a steel there's a steel insert here, but also what I was remembering when initial comment initially commenting upon this is that there's this thrust bearing that slots into there like so, um, uh, which is a very flush fit, and that's a separate item, and. Um, that's not listed in the parts book at all, and it's not uh, identical to uh, the A65. The A65 doesn't doesn't have this. Um, I don't have it to hand, but the A65 plain bearing, plain main bearing for this side, has a flange on it on the inner side, and so therefore there's no need for for this thrust bearing. So that's what I was thinking of. But um, what the uh, the gentleman was commenting upon is the fact, and quite correctly, is the fact that on the other side the the case is machined for a thrust washer that slots in there. And you can see also that um, this is correct because there's um, still the marks on this thrust washer for the pinion which butts up against this, the timing pinion on the end of the crank. And uh, to correct any end float with the crank, then there's shims that are put on the shaft on the uh, on the inner side of that of that thrust washer. And in fact, I, th I just thought there was uh, there was one shim, but when I was cleaning this up yesterday, uh, there are two, and they separated. And measuring these, these are both uh, tenth hour shims, and these shims are sh shown in the uh, in the part supplement. So, uh, as I say, they fit on the inside of the uh, the thrust washer, um, but on the end of the crank. So, if you look at the crank over here, uh, the shims just slide on here. And then this face here butts up against the, uh, the thrust washer there, which sits in the crankcase. So that's how it goes together. So um, I wasn't aware, um, and so uh, living and learning. Um, the thing to um, that I've also noticed is that these shims are available in three thou, five thou, and uh, ten thou sizes, and uh, these are two ten thous. And as we're using the same crank and the uh, the same crank cases, then we need to make sure that they uh, they go back into uh, the same position. So, with respect to uh, the preparation of uh, the two cases, then, with respect to the right-hand case, this just requires uh, a bit of a, a clean. So, I've recently invested in a um, an ultrasonic uh, cleaning bath that's big enough to take. A crankcase, uh, crankcase half. So we'll be giving that a bit of a bath. But let me just move this because there's a prep. There's some prep we need to do with uh, the left hand case, which is this one. And that is firstly on the primary drive side. You've got uh, an oil seal, and that is absolutely rock hard. And you can see also it's uh, been uh, punched. Um, to ensure it uh, remains in position. Um, anyway, that is absolutely rock hard, so that needs replacing. So we've got new ones, as these uh, these are common to uh, to the A65. And then the uh, the main bearing is common too, and um, I am going to have to replace this uh, because the engineers that uh, balance the crank obviously had to remove the original uh, roller in a race, and uh, therefore I've got a new bearing, and and that doesn't fit 
the existing outer race which is uh, still inserted here so we'll need to remove that uh, and insert the new outer race and for that we're going to need some heat um, to, to gently tease this out. So first things first is we'll get the uh, the oil seal out and then we'll apply some heat and try and gently extract that uh, main bearing, left hand main bearing outer, outer race. Okay so the, uh, the oil seal, seal uh, uh, leave it out uh, easily enough but now we're going to have to apply some heat um, to uh, to get this uh, outer race out and and this might be a bit of an awkward job really because um, the race is flush against the uh, the crankcase flange um, so there's very little room to get anything in there to try and uh, tap this out gently uh, once we've got uh, a lot of heat on it um, but anyway we'll give it a go um, and if we have to take it somewhere to uh, to get this done specialist uh, by a specialist then uh, we will um, but anyway let's uh, give it um, a bit of heat and, and see if we can get it to, to move but we've got to be very careful that we don't damage that um, that outer flange which you can see on the other side so there it is this is the uh, the cast in uh, crankcase flange I'm going to try and get something behind there to try and move that um, that race when the when it heats up uh, unless we're lucky enough and it drops out but I very much doubt that somehow but anyway heat is recommended by uh, in, the, in the workshop manual so uh, let's give it a go okay so I've got it mounted uh, firmly in the vise um, by the bottom mounting lug, so that's all good, not going to damage anything. Um, got it 90 degrees on so we can get it both sides, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, heat this up uh, sufficiently um, by uh, heat differentials, uh, differentials to, uh, to get this outer race out. So off we go. I need two hands eventually, so uh, I'll crack on with this and I'll bring it back shortly. Well, uh, no George just yet. Uh, firstly, I can get a bit of heat into this crankcase, but not enough, I don't think, with uh, with that blowtorch. So we might have to resolve to uh, resort to uh, using uh, kitchen appliances, I think, to get this up to a, a good temperature eye of the oven. Uh, but also, it's uh, very difficult to get um, any purchase at all on that outer race. So I'm just going to do um, a bit of investigating um, and I think what I might have to do um, is maybe drill uh, just a couple of, of small access point holes in this um, outer flange just so we can get something behind the flange, the far flange on that race to push it out once we've got it heated up. Uh, but I'll do a bit of research on this first before we uh, we start doing anything drastic like that. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, success. Uh, so I'm just outside the back door of the house at the moment because um, this uh, crankcase half has uh, had uh, a little heat in the oven at 250 centigrade for about 15 minutes. And I've just brought it... Uh, outside quickly ready to give it uh, a couple of taps and I've just put it down on the floor and I don't know I don't see whether he yeah you can just see down there but anyway we'll lift it up in a sec because the uh, the race just fell out as I put it down onto, onto the floor um, let's just see if I can just flip this over a bit there we go and there it is on the floor just fell out and um, that was following a bit of research uh, on the net. There was one article on uh, on a forum um, where another member had advised that um, they'd heated theirs to, um, I think, only uh, 150 centigrade, and uh, uh, it was very easy to uh, to extract an almost um, 
fell out itself. So uh, there we are, no tap at all required. Had the, uh, the mallets and the hammocks all ready to, uh, to go. Uh, but job done, so yeah, very pleased with that. Not had to, uh, uh, not had to uh, take anything out of that flange there to try and get access to uh, to the race. Also, apparently, another technique is to uh, to weld something on the inside of, uh, of that race and pull it out with a bit of heat too. But if you get it hot enough, without burning the place down, then it, uh, as I say, it just drops out. So uh, job done. Okay, there we are. Um, Still quite uh, quite warm, but cooling cooling off now. And um, there's the outer race. Didn't get quite so hot, and uh, and just fell out. And so uh, that's now scrap. I don't have the other half to it. In the bin with that. Um, a lot of you'll say, well, why didn't you just uh, take the opportunity then to uh, to put the new uh, the new outer race in? And the reason for that is that um, I need to. Uh, do a lot more cleaning on this uh, crankcase yet, uh, crankcase half yet, and I say it's going to get a bath in an, ultra, in, uh, in an ultrasonic cleaner. So I'm going to do all that first, make sure it's all really nice and clean uh, before we then uh, heat it up again and uh, and uh, press or uh, maybe just push the uh, the new outer race in. Um, so that will be uh, uh, another job in the queue. Uh, but the next um, job I think is, is going to be to um, inspect more aspects of the uh, the other crankcase half and also um, there are one or two uh, bearings in here there's obviously the uh, the bush for the cam um, there's the uh, plain main bearing we just need to make sure that's nice and clean as well but um, the other thing that I want to do is, is um, I'm probably going to change out the the oil seal on the uh, final drive here, the final sprocket oil seal. It's not feeling too bad, uh, but this outer ring's been looks like it's been bashed around a bit. So um, I think what we'll do next is uh, remove that, and that should just be a fairly straightforward uh, tease out with the screwdriver. Let's just have a quick go at it now. Can't really, can't really do it one-handed. I don't think. Well, we definitely need a new seal now. So that's that one done. Let me just put it on the bench, and uh, we'll just extract it. Well, this is proving to be uh, a little uh, obstinate. So um, that might explain why uh, it's been bashed around previously. So this might be uh, another job for uh, the oven. Um, but not today, so what we'll do is uh, we'll leave it there and um, we'll continue uh, with the crankcases in the next episode. Again, what I'll do is a little bit of research on this too, but there's nothing uh, much in the uh, in the manual that gives you any idea as to what the best way is to extract this. And I think I might take out the, uh, the final drive bearing that's behind that as well uh, and check that for play too and also uh, clean it up. So we'll leave it there for now. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next episode. and. Uh, Thanks again. Cheers. Bye-bye.